Hi guys, are you looking to root any Moto phone? If so, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'll show you how to unlock the bootloader and safely root your Motorola device. The video might be a bit longer, but don't worry, I've broken everything down into easy steps. Even if you're a complete beginner, you'll be able to root your Moto device without any confusion. Now, before we jump in, let's go over what you'll need. First, obviously you'll need your Moto device. Second, you'll need a Windows PC or laptop with a reliable internet connection. You'll also need a USB cable to connect your device to the computer. Before we dive in, here's an important disclaimer. Unlocking your bootloader will void your warranty, so it's something to keep in mind. There's always a small risk of breaking your device, so proceed carefully. The process will also wipe all the data on your device, so always back up your important data before you begin. Now, let's get started. All right, for this video, I'm using the Moto Edge 40 running on Android 14, but don't worry, this method will work for a wide range of Motorola devices. Whether you're using a Moto G series, Edge series, Fusion series, or even the Razer Fold series, the process is generally the same. Before we begin, let's quickly check if the device is already rooted. So let me open the Root Checker app to verify root access. And as you can see, no root access, just as expected. All right, now let's move on to step one, unlocking the bootloader. The first thing we need to do on your Motorola device is enable developer options. To do that, first go to your settings app, then scroll down and tap on about phone. Now, find build number and tap it seven times. You'll see a message that says, you are now a developer. Okay, once that's done, go back to the settings menu. Now go to system option and then tap on developer options. Here, scroll down and enable OEM unlocking. This will allow your bootloader to be unlocked. Next, scroll down a bit and look for USB debugging and turn it on. This will allow your phone to communicate with your computer. Once that's done, it's time to connect your device to the PC using a USB cable. Now let's switch over to the PC screen and continue with the next steps. First, let's download the official Motorola USB drivers. Just open your browser and head to the Motorola support site. Download the drivers based on your operating system, whether you're using Windows or Mac. Next, we need to download the ADB and Fastboot tools. Just head over to the website, scroll down, and download the version that matches your operating system, whether you're on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. All right, both the files are now downloaded. First, let's install the Motorola USB drivers. Just run the setup file and follow the on-screen instruction to install it. Once the drivers are installed, go ahead and extract the platform tool zip file. Now open that folder. Inside the platform tools folder, click on the address bar at the top, type CMD and hit enter. This will open a command prompt right in the folder. Now in the terminal type ADB devices and hit enter. And you should see a prompt on your phone asking to allow USB debugging. Simply tap on allow to grant the access. Once that's done, go ahead and run the ADB devices command again. Your device should now show up in the list. If you see a device ID here, that means everything is working perfectly. Now type ADB reboot bootloader in the terminal and hit enter. This will restart your phone and boot it into fast boot mode. So now just wait for the device to boot into fast boot mode. It might take a few moments, so be patient. Once your device is in fast boot mode, you'll see a screen with the fast boot logo. All right, now head over to the official Motorola bootloader unlocking website. It has the full steps for unlocking the bootloader. Next, it's time to get your device ID. So back in your command prompt or terminal and type this command fast boot OEM get unlocked data. You'll see several lines of text appear in the command window, each starting with bootloader. Next, carefully copy all of these lines of text and paste it into notepad. Now, 
remove the bootloader from all the lines. Our goal is to have a single continuous string of characters. Once done, copy whole string and go back to the Motorola bootloader unlock website. Here, you'll need to sign in with your Motorola account or create one if you haven't already. I've already signed in, so let's move ahead. So scroll down and you'll find a text box where you need to paste the unlock code you just copied. After pasting the string, click on this button. Motorola will then send a unique 20 character unlock key to the email address associated with your Motorola account. So keep an eye on your inbox. The email should land in a few minutes. All right, I got the email and here's what it looks like. It has the unlock code you'll need to unlock the bootloader. Copy that unlock code from the email and paste in the notepad for now. And it also includes a link to the official guide for unlocking the bootloader. Just open that link, copy this command and paste in your notepad. Here, replace unique unlock code with your 20 character unlock key. Now copy the full command and go back to your terminal. Make sure you're still inside the platform tools terminal and that your device is still connected in fast boot mode. If your device shows up, I'll just clear the console for a clean view. And now let's run the command. Fast boot OEM unlock. After hitting enter, your phone will display a prompt asking you to confirm the bootloader unlock. Use the volume down key to select the unlock the bootloader option, then press the power button to confirm. And yes, as you can see, it now says flashing unlocked on the fast boot screen, which means the bootloader is successfully unlocked. Now, just press the power button to reboot the system. After unlocking, you'll see a warning screen every time you boot up. Don't worry, that's totally normal for unlocked devices. The phone will now factory reset and reboot with an unlocked bootloader. This wipes all data, so you'll see the Android setup screen. So, the device has booted up. First, let's confirm that the bootloader is unlocked from the developer options. Let me quickly enable developer option again. And yes, as you can see, OEM unlocking is enabled and grayed out, which confirms that the bootloader is unlocked. Also, while we're here, make sure to enable USB debugging from the developer options. We'll need that for the upcoming steps. All right, now let's move on to step three, downloading the firmware for your Motorola device. One of the best and official ways to download the correct firmware for your Motorola device is by using the Software Fix app. Just a heads up, this tool only works on Windows PCs, so make sure you're using one. Go ahead and download the Software Fix app then install it on your computer. Once installed, open the app and select Phones option here. Now, it's time to connect your Motorola device using a USB cable. When you connect the phone, it may ask for USB debugging permission. Tap Allow and then enter the code shown in the Software Fix window. And yes, once connected, the app displays all the details of my Moto H40, like the model number, I, MEI, Android version, and more. Once you're all set, just click the download button to start downloading the firmware. The size of the firmware can vary depending on your device, so it might take a little time. Software Fix also tells you exactly where the firmware is being saved on your PC, which makes things a lot easier. I've already downloaded the firmware earlier, so I'm just going to cancel this step. Now let's check the firmware package in File Manager. Open File Explorer on your PC and navigate to your C drive. From here, look for the Program Data folder. It's usually hidden. So if you don't see it, make sure Show Hidden Files is enabled in the View Settings. Once you're in Program Data, scroll down and find the RSA folder and then open Download folder. All right, so here's the firmware folder. As you can see, 
it contains a bunch of files. But we're only interested in the boot image for now. And yep, here it is. But before we move forward, we need to confirm whether this firmware uses a standard boot image or an init boot image. This matters because it affects how we'll root the device. To confirm the correct file, let's open the flashfile.xml in the same firmware folder. This file lists all the partitions along with the files they're linked to. Now, press Ctrl plus F and search for boot. There it is. We found the line pointing to boot.img, which means this firmware uses the standard boot image. Let's also search for init boot just to be sure. No results here, so our Moto Edge 40 doesn't use a separate init boot file. But if your device does show an init boot partition, then you'll need to use initboot.img instead for patching and routing. For now, let's go ahead and copy the boot.img file to our Motorola device. But if you see an init boot file instead of boot.img, just copy that one. All right, the file is now copied and here's as you can see, boot.img. Let's move on to step three, creating the Magisk patched file. First, make sure you have the Magisk APK installed on your device. Once it's installed, go ahead and open the app. In Magisk Manager, click on the Install button, then choose Select and Patch a File. Now, locate the boot image file you copied earlier from the firmware folder and select it. Magisk will now patch the boot image, creating a new file called Magisk Patched Image. Once it's done, you'll find the patched file in your downloads folder on your device. Now that we have the Magisk patched file, let's move on to step three, flashing the Magisk patched file. First, connect your device to your PC and copy the Magisk patched file from your downloads folder into the platform tools folder. Now, open the command prompt and type ADB Reboot Bootloader to reboot your device into fastboot mode. Once your device boots into fastboot mode, enter this command to flash the Magisk patched file. Fastboot flash boot and name of your Magisk patched file and then press enter. Here, you might see a pre-flash validation failed message. Don't worry, just type fastboot reboot fastboot and press enter. This will reboot your device into fastboot D mode. Now, run the flash command again. And yes, the Magisk patched file has now been flashed successfully, as you can see OK in the terminal. Finally, it's time to reboot the device. So type fastboot reboot. The first boot might take a little longer than usual, so just be patient. It's completely normal. All right, the device has booted up. Now let's check if Magisk is installed. I'm going to open the Magisk Manager app to check. And yes, as you can see, Magisk is installed on our Moto device. Let's also confirm root access using the Root Checker app. And there you go, root access is successfully installed on your device. And that's how you can safely and easily root your Motorola device using Magisk. If this video helped you out, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.